So, best girl gets talked about a lot in the anime and gacha gaming space. People certainly have their opinions on who their favorite is, and they get pretty upset when you pick somebody that's not their favorite. And that's why I expect to get some flack when I sit here and tell you that I believe the best girl in Epic 7 is this girl, Luna. And while that may not be an objective fact, I think she is the most impactful one. I mean, just look at her. She seems pretty impactful, no? So, a lot has happened with this character over the years. A lot happened before her release, during her release, and after her global server release. We're not going to talk about the things that came out during her release window besides herself, such as Tamarin or Guild Wars. We'll leave those for another video. Again, I just want to focus on everything leading up to her global release as well as the aftermath of her release. And hopefully by the end of it, you'll agree with me that there will never be another character in Epic 7 that has been as impactful as Luna and her release. So, let's go back to 2018 and talk about the state of gacha games to kind of set the stage. We didn't have huge non-IP based games like the ones Hoyoverse has with Honkai Star Rail and Genshin Impact. For non-IP based gacha games, all we had were things like Puzzle and Dragons, which were on the decline. The vast majority of mobile games were just IP tie-ins, ones that basically were propped up by the actual IP rather than how good the game was itself. Take a look at Dragon Ball Z Dokkan Battle, for example, or Naruto Ultimate Blazing. Those games were basically propped up not by their gameplay, but by their fandoms and the intellectual property. The two biggest games that I can remember in 2018 were Fate Grand Order, which is very similar to what I talked about with DBZ Dokkan Battle, as well as Fire Emblem Heroes. FGO was obviously massive because it was based off of a huge anime property, Fate Stay Night Unlimited Blade Works, one of the biggest anime of the last decade. Game has gorgeous visuals, gorgeous presentation, and amazing story, and it also has insane husbandos and waifus. So you could celebrate who best boy is and best girl is. It could be somebody like Giga Chad Kentoki or Mama Raiko, who is really pushing the envelope at this point for what sexy waifus are in gacha games. But the core gameplay isn't particularly great. Again, you probably, at least in my opinion, wouldn't play it if it wasn't a fate-based game. Then you take a look at Fire Emblem Heroes, again, also based off of a very popular strategy RPG franchise, Fire Emblem, which is having a huge resurgence over the last 10 years. But the game is massively simplified from what the actual source material was, and the content that they're producing is very much the same content kind of remixed and recycled, so the gameplay loop isn't exactly really strong. Again, characters you know, good visuals, uh, and yes, there's definitely still some husbando and waifu bait, although here it kind of feels out of place because, well, most of us classic Fire Emblem fans, we kind of prefer, like, the big armor guys like Hector. Uh, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but that's pretty much how I felt about Fire Emblem as somebody who's been playing it for uh, a very, very long time. So yeah, as you can tell, people are looking for that new, strong, non-IP mobile game to get excited about because, well... It's got to stand on its own two legs as a game that is a quality product with good gameplay elements. Again, we're all still looking for this game at the end of 2018. So along comes a little trailer in October of 2018 that my friend shows me. And I noticed that people on Reddit and in the gacha gaming space on YouTube took notice of this trailer as well. That trailer, this one. The first limited unit for a game called Epic 7. This is Luna. Shoutouts to Kageno Game down here for hosting this trailer because, well, this trailer doesn't exist on the Epic 7 Korean YouTube. It was pulled for reasons that will probably become apparent by the end of the actual video. But let's take a look and jump in to this first limited unit trailer for Luna. And if you play Epic 7 now, in 2024, or if you have played her at any point, or played it at any point, you probably notice uh, Luna's looking a little different here. Uh, she's uh, all caked up, so to speak. She ain't exactly wearing pants. Yeah, so uh, the current live design of Luna has scales here so that it's not quite so sexualized, but 
at the time, like I said, we had basically Raiko to compare this character to and not much else. So this character is really, really pushing what you could get away with uh, in a, uh, an actual gacha game. So it gets your attention with the character design, right? But now here's the question. You have my attention for the ridiculous looking character. How's the game look? Okay. Pretty good sprites, right? Oh, what's this? What is this? This is like li live 2D, right? We don't have this up until this point. It's all static images, right? Like, Fake Grand Order has full ascension arts done by, like, anime artists or, like, doujin artists or whatever. But you don't really have this, like, motion live 2D. Like, this doesn't exist at this point in 2018. Like, this is a brand new thing. So that's, again, another, like, whoa, what is this game? And then you see, you get here into the actual sprites, and you're like, wait, it moves. And they look not quite as good as FGO sprites, but pretty good, pretty close, right? Oh man, look, it's got an anime scene, and it's like, so this is like a noble phantasm in FGO, just gorgeous looking anime cutscene, but it's not as long uh, as FGO is. So it doesn't waste my time as much. And the attack animations look clean as well. Okay, I can get behind this is what I'm thinking at this point. So now you see, versus, okay, this is a 4v4 strategy RPG game with some minor PvP elements, and it's an RPG at that, which means that it probably has team building, like this, this here conveys, it's got PvP, it's got team building, it's got the graphics, it's probably grindy, it's got projects that I can work on, which are things that like, me and other RPG based mobile gamers are looking for at this point. So yeah, looks really, really good. Also, for just some nostalgia's sake, for anyone who has been playing since release, uh, I'll throw it up, uh, the sound effect for you, but y'all remember when uh, Spear of Ragnar used to be called Spear of Laguna? Spear of Laguna! Anyone, any enjoyers from back in the day for that? But yeah, that was Luna's original release trailer, and again, the character design caught my attention, but it's everything else in the trailer that made me go, whoa! This game actually looks really, really good. So I started to research it and try to learn everything I could about it because apparently this game was coming out in like two weeks on Global. Again, I knew a little bit about it because my friend who showed me this trailer had already shown me the live 2D art for Corinne that put it on my radar in the first place. But after seeing this trailer, I was so blown away by the contents of what Epic 7 had. And, you know... Other YouTubers seem to agree. I remember YouTubers like Scion Storm generating a lot of hype for this game, talking about how great all of its systems were. There were a couple of things like the fact that unequipping costed gold and these Mulligoras that people kept complaining about. But for the most part, the game looked clean. It looked promising. It looked like it had everything you'd want in an actual gacha game. It had your, uh, again, your grinding, your RPGs, your team building. Uh, it had PvP if you were into that thing. And it, of course, had the waifus, which, of course, content creators like Cyan Storm would hype up. Obviously, he talked about Luna back in the day. And also, Euphine, or as he referred to it, Euphine, which I still think is one of the funniest ways to refer to the characters. Oh, she, she fine. <laughs> so, yeah, two weeks passes. Game comes out. I download the game. And I noticed right away something was kind of off about it. Why are we on the same patch as the Korean server? That's that's not right, is it? Like, why are we starting on the Destina banner? I don't remember that ever being the actual first banner that came out for the game. So up until this point, if you had been playing a foreign language gacha game, so for example, like Puzzle and Dragons came from JP, they would be the Japanese server three to six months ahead of you, and you would basically be playing one to two patches back all the time. Same thing with Fake Grand Order. The Japanese version was two years ahead of the North American slash global version of the game. So yeah, a lot of people who've been playing these games for a very long time, we've gotten really accustomed to what people refer to now as Clairvoyance EX or like Future Sight. You know everything that's coming out in the coming months to years, so you can save and plan accordingly 
And it makes the game kind of like a lot easier uh, on the spending and a lot easier on uh, the deciding whether or not you should roll for something and not constantly be worried about like a limited or some kind of like character that you think looks cool comes out. Epic 7 didn't have that, which is both a blessing and a curse. It's a curse because now you can't really plan accordingly, but it's exciting because you finally feel like you're not just getting, like, the hand-me-downs. Like, you're on par with everyone else in the world. Like, you're experiencing these things together for the very first time. And that's that's an indescribable feeling. Like, that's become the norm now for most games. But back then, that was like a, holy crap, this game has that? Like, no game has this at this point. But that comes with a pretty big drawback, right? Because, well, for someone like me who had my head turned by the character Luna, that was a limited character. And that character is not available anymore. So the character I downloaded the game for, I can't get it. Huh. Oh, well, I guess I'll just wait for the rerun. So then you start to see other people on social media, on Discord and YouTube and Reddit, start to talk about the character in their journal, Luna, that they can't get. Oh, she was a limited character? Okay. So when's the rerun coming? Because, well, I didn't play on the Korea server. I started on the global server. I just found out about this game. And I want this character because this is the character that got me to notice the game. Uh, and also, by the way, during this time period, not right away, but eventually, uh, Smilegate would change the app's icon to Luna. Kind of like as a, uh, a bait and switch, right? So it's kind of like, a, oh, okay. Well... Luna's on the icon. Luna's in the advertisements. Luna's on the trailer. Where's the Luna? And that started to become a pretty growing sentiment. Every banner comes out, right? Red Cecilia comes out. People are asking, is this character good, right? Should I roll for this character? What's not good about the character? And you'll see maybe one or two at first in the comments. I don't know, man. I'm just saving for Luna. Like, I'm saving all my bookmarks for Luna. Whenever Luna comes out... I got to get her. And like I said, start small at first, but then you start to see with every new release over the coming weeks to months, every thread, every discussion, I don't know, man, saving for Luna, saving for Luna, saving for Luna. When's Luna coming? When's Luna coming? And then finally just truncated to Luna when question mark. Yeah, it, uh, it got pretty crazy it started to overshadow almost everything and of course it led to some pretty spectacular memes of which i will show you on your screen throughout the rest of this section but yeah this started to become uh a pretty big meme in and of itself and an annoyance to some because well people were complaining about issues like mulligoras or game balance. You recall in one of my previous look back videos, we talked about how they had to reduce the cost of mulligoras by 40% so that players could play the game. So yeah, obviously that was a valid complaint, but you would still have people asking when's Luna, when's Luna coming is Luna coming in the next banner, even in these discussions. And again, it just started to drown out everything. Luna, when became the rallying cry. It felt like for a huge group of people in the Epic 7 community. And the community supporters even acknowledged this. And notice I said community supporters because back then, Epic 7 was produced by Smilegate. It was not owned by Smilegate, right? Super creative, the developers were the owners of Epic 7. And then you have obviously Smilegate doing things like the production role, maybe some marketing, things like that. But for the most part, the game is Super Creative's game at this point. And they didn't have official community managers, much like the ones that we know nowadays, like Gimmick, for example, right? We didn't have those. Instead, we had volunteers that would post on various social media platforms called community supporters. And they would always ask, what can we fix about the game? What should we relay to the dev team? So on and so forth. And at first, it was serious issues about game balance, things like Mulligoras, like I said. But even then, the number one thing that people started to ask for is Luna when? And they even had to acknowledge this. By the time Luna actually came out in global, you were seeing things like, I don't have to read Luna when anymore. Thank goodness kind of thing. 
So yeah, it, it got really bad. Like even content creators, there would be nothing, no indication whatsoever that we were going to be getting Luna. You would see things again, like Scion Storm just put in his title. Luna coming soon? Like when, when is Luna coming? Because it gets clicks. There's a ton of videos around this time that are just like, when's Luna? Do you need Luna? Things like that. It just, again, overshadowed the conversation. And again, it got to a pretty big po boiling point. You started to see some uh, pretty uh, rough sentiments regarding this character. A lot of people were just fed up with the Luna when spam. Like this uh, video here by Excess Plays. I'm just going to let it run. So uh, you could see this is, again, another video from back in the day. Hello everyone, Josh Burtz back at it again with another Epic 7 video. Today we got a discussion topic that I've been wanting to talk about for a while. It's been something that's been kind of just spammed everywhere, and I think yep. enough is enough. See, you can so, see enough in is case enough. You're to Epic 7, there is it, a character. Uh, he is very not happy uh, about it. You can tell. Because, again, if you're a content creator in this time, it's probably the thing that Luna, all of your viewers are asking about. On your screen, already have her Where's up? Luna? Now, When's Luna? The biggest reason that people want her, I think, is the fact that, you know, she has assets. And to be honest, guys and girls, that's, uh... there's websites out there that you can look at <laughs> real people with assets as well. Just saying. Uh... But anyway, so if that's the only reason that you're trying to pull for a Luna or you're asking for Luna, you need to stop, please. Need so, to stop, please. The entire Reddit Oof. community, Discord community. It's not going to stop people. People, the, the Luna army Everyone was dedicated. Is Trust every me. Every single week, when is Luna coming? When is Luna or coming? They're speculating that Luna is going to be the next banner. And time and time and time and time. time again, Luna, of course, has not come. Now, with the whole. Yeah, so you can see, like, people really started to say enough is enough. We get it. You know, again, there's even memes made of it. Like, oh, you only want her for this reason. Like, we get it. But again, Luna Army not deterred, right? And it, it got to the point where it started to actually impact banners, so to speak. Because people were saving for Luna and not spending on new characters. So, you're a gotcha game. You're trying to sell people on characters... People aren't spending on characters because they're expecting a very specific character that got them to play the game potentially in the first place. A character that you've been using in your marketing. So, obvious solution then. Just release Luna, right? Well, the problem is that Luna on the Korean server, uh, as far as I can tell from what I've seen doing some research, uh, this character was a one and done limited deal. It was understood that if you skip the character, you missed out for good. There was no mention of the character ever potentially getting a rerun. If you missed her, too bad, right? So on the topic of Luna when and should global server get it, well, the Korean server wasn't really having any of that. They were pretty mad. It was basically all fire and pitchforks. Uh, you know, Global can't have it. We spent money on this thing. We joined the game early for this thing. You can't have this thing. Like, that goes against what you said, Smilegate. And as you can see, this has become like a track record uh, with Smilegate and Super Creative over the years. Is, uh, hey, it, it, you can't do one thing because it'll outrage others. So that's why you don't have things like nerfs. We'll talk more about that in perhaps another video. But you can see their hands are kind of tied. Here's the dilemma. You can't rerun Luna without your Korean community getting upset at you. But if you don't rerun Luna, then the rest of your servers, uh, they're not going to spend money on the game. And it's a new game. Year one is really important for any new gotcha game in order to get a foothold and establish itself. So, as you can probably tell by the uh, Cecilia bot timeline, if you scroll over here, here is Luna's release date. On February 3rd, 2019, and it says, no KR server rerun. So the solution, as you can probably tell, because it's a pretty obvious one, is, well, only rerun it for the global and the Asia servers. And to appease everybody in the Korean community, everyone on the Korea server gets a free copy of Luna. But that didn't stop them from also sneaking in a policy change that limiteds could be rerun in the future because, well, this whole Luna Wen situation, it's 
PR, but not necessarily good PR. I don't know if you really want to go through the hassle of the Luna army with another character later on in the future. So you have to ask yourself, what other character in E7 history has made a change to the policy that Luna has? And the result of this entire banner coming out on Global is, well, the obvious. Money. Like, a whole lot of money. Luna made nearly $2 million during her release window from everything that I could find. We didn't really have these sensor tower reports like we do now, so it's kind of just left up to just random Reddit posts that you could find, as well as some videos that are on YouTube. But again, as far as I can tell, Luna made nearly $2 million during her release, which puts her pretty much, I believe, as the most profitable banner in 2019, uh, with only really Dizzy and Biken from the Guilty Hero collab in May coming close. In fact, E7 made more money during Luna's release window than it did during the entire Guilty Gear collab. And that's not to say that the Guilty Gear collab was a dud. Collabs usually are very, very successful for this game. But when you compare the average banner compared to Guilty Gear, Guilty Gear just blows it out of the water. For Luna's release window to actually exceed that collab, again, that is just insane. Also, as a bit of aftermath from the release of Luna's banner on Global, Smilegate acquired the majority stake in Super Creo. Now, could they have done this before Luna's release and it just came to light during it? Sure. Either way, it's either a case of, hey, maybe they acquired it and pushed Luna out for the profits, or Luna turned such a profit that maybe Smilegate decided this company is like making money hand over fist. Yeah, we can invest and acquire them. So nowadays... We simply refer to Epic 7's owners as Smogate. And you'll notice I always say Smogate and Supercrave because Supercrave are still the devs, but they are not the owner of Epic 7 anymore. It is, again, Smogate now, right? And the first order of new business under new management, greenlight the very first Epic 7 figure, which is due out later that year in 2019 in December. Except it comes with another problem. Uh, the figure's not mass-produced. Like, if you've not, not, not actually been around the space here, right? Uh, to say that the Luna figure is rare is an understatement, right? It goes for quite a bit of money. I only know two people personally that own it, which is like Shotgun Shogun, uh, who won it through a promotional event, and ATK, who spent quite a pretty penny, I'm sure, on the secondary market to actually acquire it. I even talked to former community manager Mashu from uh, Smogate for Epic 7. And there is a Luna statue at Smogate HQ, but the whole team has to share it. Because even if you work for Epic 7, you don't get a Luna statue. You can't acquire a Luna statue even being an employee of the company. You just have one that you're allowed to look at and admire every single day. At the New York 7 Epic 7 meetup in 2019, I remember there was a raffle to give away a Luna figure once it was released. And the person who won it, I distinctly remember them getting pretty big sums of money offers for this Luna, like over $1,000 for this thing. So yeah, it's, it's still rare. It's still expensive to this day, right? And as a testament to the character's popular, popularity, um, I know myself and a lot of others, we still would like to have a mass release of the Luna figure. Like it is a pretty heavily requested item that people really really want this character is still to this day used in pvs to promote the game she is in fact also on the animation that ends every official epic 7 stream in case you don't know and on top of that <laughs> uh this character right here is on the back of volume two of the art book right just in case you doubt this character's popularity now, you're probably wondering, why is it so important that she's on the back of the art book? Of course, right? Here's the thing. The character is nowhere in any of the pages of this book. Like, okay, yeah, sure, there's Mage Luna, but, like, it's not the same character, right? Why is Luna here on the back of the book if for no other reason than she really is just that popular? She is truly best girl. I have to assume that this character 
is one of, if not the highest selling banner of all time. Maybe there's more. Well, I don't know because we don't have that data available. And if you do, then obviously please let me know down in the comments below. But yeah, Luna was kind of a big deal back then and made quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of money for the company, right? So yeah, to wrap it up, Luna, at least to me, I feel like represents some of the silliest points in the game and some of the highest highs that we've had. I still remember the morning that this character was announced on February 13th, just logging into voice chat with the boys, everyone going nuts, like, oh my god, she's finally here. It's like the end of the memes. Like, we are we are finally getting to experience this character. Class Bozo, who was a Korean VTuber who was very popular during that time. A lot of you might know him as Masta. He was doing viewer pools on Twitch for this character, and, like, the numbers, like, were massive. I don't really remember any streams being as popular or as big as Luna's release for at least quite some time. Yeah. Again, I'm speaking finally on this character because, well, again, even though she's a fan service character, I, get, I really feel like she just represents the, the brightest point in year one of Epic 7. She just feels like the game's mascot, honestly, and it's why players like myself, like Carr... And like ATK, I feel like are so passionate about the character. She just was that all-encompassing character that just generated hype and discourse around the game. She just made it, I feel like, what it is today. At least that's my opinion, right? She just defines year one of Epic 7, at least again in my book. And everything after her, it, by comparison, like... It starts to feel kind of like a fiery mess for reasons we'll talk about when we get to the Mystic Batter in another look back video. But yeah, Luna. In my opinion, probably the best or at least the most impactful character that's ever come out in this game. And Smallgate, if you're watching this video, it's the year of the dragon, right? And that means that I feel like you owe it to something to your mascot character. Like, you, you don't just put her on the art book for no reason. Like... Can I get a rework? Can I get a limited? Can I get a Moonlight 5-star summon for this character? In the Year of the Dragon. Like, Luna deserves a resurgence. She deserves to be a meta-relevant hero in 2024. And here we are, going into February. So you have 11 months to go. Ball's in your court. Thanks for watching. Hopefully I made my case. Do you have fond memories with Luna? Do you hate this character? Do you remember this discourse? Like all of the ridiculous memes that came out? Please, I would love to hear anything in the comment section below. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week. And I'll catch you in the next one. Later now.